Hi, everybody. I want to thank you for your prayers as I've been recovering from surgery and being in the hospital. The doctor told me he wanted me to take one more week off uh, before coming back to teach, but then he also told me that I could uh, I could speak at one service if uh, if that's all I would do. And so uh, I, I was so anxious to get back to this series, I couldn't wait to be back with you. I wanna say hi to all of our campuses. Hi, everybody. Hi, Manila. Hi, Hong Kong. Hi, Buenos Aires. Hi, Berlin. And everybody else, we love you so much. And we're gonna continue in our series on rethinking your life. Now, let's begin with Romans 12, verse two. If you'll take out your message notes, uh, Romans 12, two is one of the theme verses for this series. And uh, let's begin with it. In the New Living Translation, it says this. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And that's what this whole series is about, changing the way you think. You know, God is far more interested in changing my mind than he is in changing my circumstances. We always want God to change our circumstances. God wants to change your mind. Now, before we look at how to manage your mind, how to make your mind mind, have you ever noticed your mind doesn't always obey you? Well, we're gonna look at today how to make your mind mind or how to manage your mind, but first I wanna review why it's so important that uh, I manage my mind. Now, I gave you about 11 reasons in the very first message of this series, but let me just mention a couple uh, in, in review. I need to learn how to manage my mind because number one, my thoughts control my life. My thoughts control my life. If you have good thoughts, you're gonna have a good life. If you have bad thoughts, you're gonna have a bad life. If you have sick thoughts, you're gonna have a sick life. Uh, if you have sinful thoughts, you're gonna have a sinful life. Proverbs 4.23 says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. We control what we eat, we control what we believe, we control uh, 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 what, we, what we drink, and, but, but we don't always control what we allow in our minds. And, and the Bible tells us that every action in your life starts with a thought. If you don't think it, it doesn't happen. If you think good things, then good things are gonna happen if you, it, uh, and you're gonna do good things. But if you have bad thoughts, then you're gonna tend to act in bad ways. So your mind controls and shapes your life. But there's a second reason that you need to learn to manage your mind. It's because my mind is the battleground for sin. It's where every temptation happens. It's where every sin actually starts. The sin of pride starts in the mind. The sin of lust starts in the mind. The sin of hatred starts in the mind. Fear starts in the mind. Resentment, jealousy, envy, they all start in the mind. Worry, being stressed out, that's all in the mind. This, the battlefield for sin is fought not around you, it's fought in your mind. Romans chapter 7, verses 22 and 23, Paul talks about this battle that's constantly going on in our minds, and he says this, I love to do God's will so far as my new nature is concerned, but there's something else deep within me that is at war with my mind, and it wins the fight, and it makes me a slave to the sin within me. Paul says, in my mind, I want to be God's servant, but instead I find myself still enslaved to sin, you know, the habits and the hurts and the hangups that mess up our lives. Now, notice the words in that sentence. I want you to circle the word war, the word fight, the word enslaved, circle the word mind. These are battles that are going on in your brain. Now, sometimes you're conscious of this mental battle that's going on, and at other times you're not conscious of it. But it's one of the causes of mental fatigue. We're in a constant battle for your mind and your mind gets tired because of the battle of things you wanna think and things you don't wanna think. You know, the reason this battle is so intense is because your mind is your greatest asset. And Satan knows that whatever gets your attention gets you. And so he, he, the, he starts with the mind, not with your behavior, not even with your emotions, he starts with your thoughts. Now there's a third reason why you have to learn to manage your mind, and it's because it's the key to peace. It's the key to happiness. It's the key to life. An unmanaged mind leads to tension. A managed mind leads to tranquility. An unmanaged mind leads to pressure. An unmanaged mind, a managed mind leads to peace. An unmanaged mind leads to stress. 
but a managed mind leads to strength and serenity. Uh, an unmanaged mind leads to conflict in your life. It leads to chaos in your life. But a managed mind leads to confidence. The Bible says it like this in Romans chapter 8, verse 6. If your sinful nature controls your mind, then there's death. In other words, it's a dead end. You're going to die. But if the Holy Spirit controls your mind, then there's life and peace. Now, this is why we're doing this whole series on learning to manage your mind and how to rethink every area of your life. Now, what I want to do just today, again, is set up where we're going to go in the future. In the future, we're going to look at specific areas of your life that you need to rethink, some very specific areas, rethinking uh, you know, your, what happiness is all about, rethinking your, your response to, to uh, situations and problems and, and suffering, uh, rethinking relationships, rethinking your future, rethinking your past. But today, I just want to look at three choices that you have to make every single day. In fact, you're going to have to make them several times a day. These are three daily choices that you have to make for a healthy mind in order to get your mind to mind, in order to manage your mind. And those three choices are these. They all start with F. You have to feed your mind, you have to free your mind, and you have to focus your mind. The Bible teaches all three of these all through the New Testament. I have to feed my mind, I have to free my mind, and I have to focus my mind. Let's look at them. Number one, if I want to learn how to manage my mind instead of having it manage me, first, I must feed my mind with truth. I must feed my mind with truth. Jesus said, it's one of the most famous things he said, the truth will set you free. But, you know, a lot of people quote that verse and don't realize that he's talking about the Bible. Uh, 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 the, the Bible, this, this is the truth. Uh, uh, Matthew 4, verse 4 says, people need more than bread for their life. They must feed on every word of God. This is soul food. This is the owner's manual for life. This is the truth that sets you free. There's a lot of things that are true that won't set you free. I could teach you how to uh, you know, program a, a computer. That won't set you free. I could teach you all of the uh, biology of a fruit fly, uh, but that's not gonna set you free. There's a lot of truth you can learn in life that's not gonna set you free. The truth that sets you free is the truth of God's word in the owner's manual for life. And so I've gotta feed my mind on the truth, which means I've gotta feed my mind on this book. How often? All the time. Psalm 119, 147 says this, I rise early. I rise early to cry out for help and to put my hope in your words. I love that word hope. Do you know, I've said this many times, there are over 7,000 promises in this book, in the Bible. Somebody's counted over 7,000 promises of God. And if you need hope, and if you're feeling hopeless, it means you're not spending enough time in this book. Because if you get these promises into your life, you're going to be a hopeful person. If you'll become a promise person, these promises are the truth. And if you'll become a promise person, you're going to have all the hope you need. Look at this next verse. Psalm 119, 97. Lord, how I love your word. I think about it all day long. Take your pen and circle the phrase all day day long. That's feeding my mind on the truth all day long. Do you think about God's word all day long? No, you do not. You might not even think about it once a day. But the Bible says if you start your day with the word of God, then you can think about it throughout the day. And then you can be pulling it back into memory when you need it in difficult times. Psalm 16 verse 7 says this, even in the darkest of night, your teachings fill my mind. You know, for many, many years, I had the habit of keeping my Bible right by my bedside, and I actually would leave it open like this, so that the last thing that I would read as I was go to bed at night would be the Word of God, and the first thing I would see when I'd wake up in the morning was the Word of God open. Somehow, I find that if I leave my Bible open, it's easier to pick it up. If it's laying there closed on the, on the, on the bedstand, I might get up and walk away from it, but if it's open, I have a tendency to just pick it up and keep reading. Now, let me show you how serious this is how, and how serious David was uh, about 
being in the word, that the truth set you free. There was a time when David had so many enemies, he was actually a fugitive. He was on the run. He was running for his life. He was hiding in caves. And no matter what happened in his life, he fed himself with the truth of God. Psalm 119, 95 is one of the Psalms that he wrote during this time. And he says this, when wicked people hide to ambush and kill me, I quietly keep my mind on your decrees. When you look at all of the things that are in the world, it's easy to get discouraged. You pick up a newspaper, you listen to talk radio, you watch TV news or read the news on the internet, uh, you're going to get discouraged. You're going to get, you're going to feel hopeless. But I quietly keep my mind on your word. I need to feed my mind with the truth. Now, David says, I do that even when I'm running from my enemies. Do you do that in a crisis? That's managing your mind. So the first thing I have to do is I have to feed my mind with truth. Second thing I have to do to order, learn to manage my mind instead of having it manage me is I must free my mind from destructive thoughts. I must free my mind from destructive thoughts. Your mind has to be liberated. Your mind has to be delivered. Your mind needs to be set free. Your not, mind needs to be released. Now, this is not easy. It's easy for me to tell you that it needs to be done. It's not easy for it to happen. But how do you liberate your mind? How does God deliver or release or set free your mind? And, and, and why is it so hard? Well, because as we said, we're in a battle. There's a battle for your mind going on from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. And there are three forces in that battle that work against all your best intentions. You have good intentions to fill your mind with the truth on a daily basis. You know, I want to live the way God wants me to live. I want to know God better. I, I want to fill my mind with truth. I want to feed on the word of God. But none of that ground is, is, is given up easily. Satan's going to fight you on it. He's going to battle you, and you're going to have to fight to free your mind. Why? Because of these three enemies. What are the three enemies that battle your brain? Well, number one, enemy number one is my old nature. Uh, in other words, it is my sinful nature to think of myself, not to think of what God wants. Romans 7, 23 says this, I see in my body a principle at war that is that, that uh, with the law of the mind, taking me captive to the law of sin that dwells inside of me. Look at that. He says, there's, there's a battle in my mind and, it take, and this law of sin takes captive in my mind. In other words, I'm, I'm a hostage to my thoughts. Have you ever felt that? Like, I just can't get this thought out of my mind. I'm a hostage to my thoughts. Do you often find yourself doing things you don't want to do? Yeah, well, that's what that verse is saying. You ever knowingly engage in self-defeating behavior? You go, I know this is not good for me, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yes, that's the battle in your mind, and you're losing it. Your old nature is not your friend. It is the source of all your bad habits. It's the source of all your self-defeating uh, uh, you know, habits that tend to take you down. I want you to write this down. Here's an important point. We're going to go over and over in this series on this. Write this down. I don't have to believe everything I think. Okay? I don't have to believe everything I think. Why? Because the truth is your mind lies to you all the time. Just because you think something is true doesn't make it true. Just because you feel something is true doesn't make it true. Your mind and your emotions often lie to you. And, and part of maturity is growing up and learning to know the difference between, is that really true? One of the most important questions you can ask in life is to challenge your own thoughts and to say, well, I know what I'm thinking, but is that really true? You know, Nobody likes me. Is that really true? Uh, I'm never going to get any better. Is that really true? Uh, my life is worthless. Is that really true? You need to ask that question. Is that really true over and over in your life? Romans chapter 8, verse 5 says this. Those who are dominated by their sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So the first enemy is inside. 
And that is my old nature. The second enemy is the enemy around me. That's Satan. And uh, Satan is the second enemy. And he, he wants to change your mind in all the wrong directions. Now, let me say this very clearly. Uh, if you have Christ in your life, then you have power greater than Satan. Satan cannot force you, if you're a Christian, Satan cannot force you to do anything. The only way he can influence and control your life is by suggestion. And when he puts those suggestions in your mind, we call that temptation. So he can't force you to do anything, but he can suggest. And when you don't learn how to control your mind, you don't learn how to manage your mind, make your mind mine, then you're going to let that stuff in. Satan is continually planting negative thoughts, negative ideas, negative impressions. The moment you wake up, he's telling you to do the exact opposite of what God wants you to do. Go ahead, do that. You deserve it. Get angry. Go ahead and get angry. You deserve to get angry. They got, they, they're, they're stupid. You need to get even with that person. How dare, dare they say that about you? You need to get back at them. And he's giving you all, where do you think that's coming from? He's just feeding you ammunition. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, Paul talks about a guy who had sinned in the church. He says, I've forgiven that man. I didn't hold on to a grudge. Why? So that Satan won't outsmart us, for we're very familiar with his evil schemes. Did you know that anytime you refuse to forgive anybody, you've fallen for Satan's trap? God is not the one who wants you to hold on to hurt. Satan's the one who wants you to hold on to hurt. He wants you to hold a grudge. He wants you to be unforgiving. Anytime I won't forgive somebody, I've given in to thought, a suggestion that Satan's given me. So I've got the, I've got the, the self, an old nature within me, and then I've got Satan around me and then uh, against me. Then I've got the third enemy, which is the world, and that's the world's values. Now, the world's values are constantly uh, in opposition to everything God wants. And they're promoted all around you. Advertisers promote the world's values. Movies promote the world's values. TV, music promotes the world's values. Um, you know, celebrities promote the world's values. Everybody around, there's not anybody around you in the world who's actually encouraging you to do the right thing. They're saying, you got to do what's best for you. Think of yourself. That's why when I wrote Purpose Driven Life in the first sentence, it's not about you is the most countercultural statement you could possibly be because everything in this world says it's all about you. It's all about you. And you don't need to think about anybody else, just think about yourself. Now the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, all that is in the world, and then it lists what's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of this world. Have you noticed that there's nothing around you that encourages you to be disciplined? Nobody encourages you to be disciplined. It says, give in to the lust of the flesh, give in to the lust of the eyes, give in to the pride of life, give in to passion, possession, and position, give in to sex, salary, status, give in to living for yourself. I want to feel this way. I want everybody to worship me. So how do you fight that mental battle? 2 Corinthians chapter 10 tells us. 2 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 5 says this. Though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons that we fight with are not the weapons of this world. The weapons of the world today are primarily political. We don't use those weapons. The Bible says our weapons have divine power. And what do they have divine power to do? To demolish strongholds. Now, if you're taking notes, circle the word stronghold because I'm going to come back to that word in just a minute. Our weapons have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish any argument and every pretension that sets itself up, like in our minds, against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Christ. In other words, we're in a wrestling match with our thoughts and we got to pin them down. It's a mental battle. Now it says that in your mind, you have what are called strongholds. Circle that again. Strongholds or underline. What is a stronghold? Well, a stronghold is a lie that I believe and I'm acting on the basis of that. Anytime I believe a lie, and all lies come from the devil, 
So Satan's the father of their lies. Anytime I believe a lie about God, that's a stronghold. Anytime I believe a lie about myself, that's a stronghold. Anytime I believe a, a, a lie about the world or about the future or the past or the present, that's a stronghold. Anytime I believe a lie about money or I believe a lie about sex, that becomes a stronghold in my life. It can be a false value. It could be a, a worldview like hedonism, uh, live for pleasure, or materialism, live for money. The ghost can become strongholds when money becomes the most important thing in my life. That's a stronghold. A stronghold can be a personal attitude. I've met people who the stronghold in their brain was worry. I've met people who the stronghold in their brain was depression. I've met people whose stronghold was resentment or envy or pride or self, self-conceit or ego. Now, I want you to notice two phrases uh, in that passage. It says, we take captive, which means we bring it under control, we conquer it, we capture it. That's a war term. We, take, we, we have to bring our thoughts captive. We don't just let them go all over the place. And it says, we remake it, we make it obedient. In other words, we bring it in submission. You say, well, that's great, Rick. I, I'd like to do that. I, I'd like to have more control over the way that I think. How in the world do I do that? How do you make your mind mind you? Well, first, let's, first you just admit that, don't, that they don't always mind you. You confess, you know what? My thoughts disobey me. They rebel. The, my mind has a mind of its own. It, it often goes off in a different di- direction. I don't intend to. In other words, have you ever started praying and you're praying and w- wanting to pray about something and all of a sudden the worst idea starts coming in your mind? Your mind is going off in a di- different direction. I said it a few weeks ago, when I need to ponder, my thoughts want to wander. And when I want to pray, they drift away. The reason most people are ineffective and defeated in life is they don't know how to fight the battle of the mind. Now, in the weeks ahead, we're going to go into great detail in this series, specifically about how temptation captures your attention and the simple steps that you need to take to defeat it. Because once you know how temptation works, it can't defeat you anymore because you know how to stop it before it gets to step two or three or four. You get it stopped at step one. But I will tell you this uh, this weekend. The best time to win the battle in your mind is before it happens. And that means you choose to do what we've just talked about, to feed your mind the truth before you get in a mess. You choose every moment to free your mind from destructive thoughts by learning to control. And we're going to talk about that more and more in the week's head. Psalm 119, 112 says this, I've made up my mind to obey your laws forever, no matter what. I've made up my mind to to, to obey your laws no matter what. Now, I want to mention a a third and, and final step in this introduction. First, I have to feed my mind with the truth over and over and over if I'm going to remake my mind. Second, I have to free my mind from a destructive thoughts by choosing to mentally shift channels. And third, I must not only feed and free, I must focus. I must focus my mind on the right things. And that's how you get the freedom. Focus my mind on the right things. Now, a couple weeks ago, uh, in a previous message, I talked about uh, a dozen or 11 things to have the mind of Christ. Uh, let me just mention three things that will make the biggest difference in your mental state. And if you'll just work on these this week and next week in our next session, we'll come back and talk about uh, further uh, steps. But there's three simple steps to get you started today on how to manage your mind and make your mind mind. Number one, think about Jesus. Okay, write that down. If I want to learn how to manage my mind, I need to actually develop the habit of thinking about Jesus, thinking about Jesus Christ. You've heard it said, you know, you become whatever you think about most. Well, 2 Timothy 2.8 says, keep your mind on Jesus Christ. Keep your mind on Jesus Christ. So think about Christ. Hebrews 12.3 says, think about Jesus' example. He held on while wicked people were doing evil things to him. So do not get tired and stop trying. What what gives you the power to keep on going when you feel like giving up? 
Think about Jesus. Keep your mind on Jesus. Number two, think about others. Do you realize what a radical statement that is? When I say it's not about you, you think about others. Philippians 2 verse 4 says this, don't just think about your own affairs, but be interested in others too and in what they're doing. So what I'm saying is when you're in a situation tomorrow or even today and you stop, first I say, okay, think about Jesus. What would Jesus do in this situation? And then second, think about others. What do other people need in this situation? Stop and intentionally think about Jesus and intentionally think about others. Would that transform your life if you thought about each other and other people first? Oh yeah, yeah. Hebrews 10, 24 says, let us think about each other and let us help each other to show love and to do good deeds. Anybody who starts thinking about other people is gonna shine in this world because most of the world isn't thinking about other people, they're just thinking about themselves. Think about Jesus, think about others. And number three, this will, this will radically change your life. Think about eternity. You don't do that very often. You're so caught up in the here and now and the, what's happening right now, you don't think about eternity. And yet Colossians chapter three, verse two says this, let heaven fill your thoughts. Don't only think about things down here on earth. In other words, you've heard people say, well, they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. You know what? That's a bunch of baloney. It's impossible to be so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. What is possible is to be so earthly minded, you're no heavenly good. You can't help anybody because you're just thinking about earth. The truth is the heavenly minded people always have done the most good in this world for thousands and thousands of years. So think about heaven. Think about eternity. Think about this life is not all there is, that there's more to life than just here and now, that the stuff that I th I'm so worried about, what people think of me, it's not going to matter in five years, much less in 50 or in a thousand years or in eternity. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 says this, no eye has ever seen and no ear has ever heard and no mind has ever imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. One of the reasons we have a hard time thinking about eternity, it's a mind blower because it's in a dimension we don't even understand. We understand 2D and 3D, but there are dimensions we don't even know about. And if God had created this world with so much beauty and color, spent seven days figuring this one out, and he's had all of eternity prepare heaven, think about how amazing heaven is gonna be. The guy who invented sunsets and, and, and ocean views and all of the beautiful things in the world, that God is the God who created heaven. Now, when you start thinking about all of your problems and the little nitpicking problems are gonna just seem so uh, big in your life, but when you start thinking in light of eternity that my life here on earth isn't really that long, and even the, if I had problems my entire life, it's nothing compared to the glory and the joy and the pleasure and the enjoyment of the things we're gonna have to look forward to in eternity. Everything else is inferior compared to that. So let me sum it up. I need to feed my mind on truth every day. I gotta get in this book. I need to free my mind from destructive thoughts by catching them, and we're gonna talk about that in the weeks ahead, and, and mentally shifting the channel. You don't have to think a thought. Nobody's holding the gun to your head. You don't have to think depressive thoughts. You don't have to think worried thoughts. You don't have to think hurtful thoughts. You don't have to think resentful thoughts. Nobody's holding the gun to your head. You can change the channel of your mind quite easily. And so I, 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 I refocus and I choose not to think about them by changing the way I think. And then I focus my mind on the right thing. And when I'm focusing on the right thing, then I don't have to pay attention to the wrong thing. When I'm watching uh, you know, television and I don't like what I see, I just flip the channel and I just change the attention so I'm no longer upset by that. It's very, very simple. Now, I want you to work on these this week. Next week, I'm gonna be back for the next part and we're gonna be talking about how to rethink major areas of your life in, in the sessions ahead. But I want you to remember these three things. Every day, feed my mind with truth, and focus my mind on eternity and forget all the other stuff. Just, just get, get it out of my mind. Re, re, think my life, uh, return to what God wants me to do and uh, change my attention. Let's pray together. Can I pray for you? 
Let's bow our heads. Father, you gave us our minds, and we're made in your image, and the only reason we're created is we're made in the image of the Creator. This is the greatest gift that you've ever given us, the gift of intellect. And, and we realize that because our minds are our greatest asset, then it's also the greatest battleground. And, and we realize that a lot of times there's a battle going on and we don't even realize that it's going on, but that the world and the flesh and the devil are all teaming up to thwart our best intentions. And so we need your help. Now I'm gonna ask you to pray. Why don't you say a simple prayer like this? Just say, God, help me to put into practice what I've just heard. Help me to put into practice what I've just learned. Say, God, help me to do what you've called me to do, to make these choices on a daily basis. I want to feed my mind with truth. I want to free my mind from destructive thoughts by turning the channel and taking every thought captive. And, 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 I, and I want to focus my mind on the right things. I don't want my mind to run wild. Help me to be wise to temptation. And, and God, today, I'm going to make up my mind to obey your word and to believe your truth no matter what. Help me to think about Jesus. Help me to think about others. Help me to think about eternity so that my life may be truly transformed. I pray this. In your name, Jesus, amen. Thanks for checking out this message on YouTube. My name is Jay and I'm Saddleback's online pastor. I wanna invite you to take your next step by checking out our online community or help get you connected to a local Saddleback campus. Three things we have to offer you right now. First, learn more about belonging to a church family by taking class 101. Second, don't live life alone and get into community with others by joining an online small group or a local home group in your area. Third, join our Facebook group to be more engaged with our online community throughout the week. Take your next step and learn where a local campus is near you by visiting saddleback.com online or email online at saddleback.com. Hope to hear from you soon.